Okay, just letting everyone know that the meeting is being recorded. And I wanted just to announce that having attended the Zoom open meeting law session that town council ran, in theory, we can do remote meetings through the end of March 2025. Um, I gleaned several other important tidbits, but they are specific to meeting or to minutes and such, and I will distribute an email with that information. You said that's March? Through 3-31-25. On to the minutes of April 9th. Um, noted that in the list of people present, Susan Morgan was omitted. <laughs> and Susan, I sent you uh, an email. Um, there's just a misspelling of one of our visitors' names. Okay. It's S K I at the end of her last name. Oh, I, I, I did S L I. Are there any other corrections or edits to be made? Should I make a note of the corrections in this month's meeting? Okay. Um, in that case, may I please have a motion to accept the minutes as amended? This is when someone says, so moved. So moved. And someone else says second. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. We do not have public to comment, and therefore we move on to the director's report. Okay, so um, the big story this week is that someone <laughs> drove into the library. Um, I think it's mentioned here, but uh, some sort of mishap occurred, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. Um, don't know who, we don't know how. Um, it, it seems like someone may have put their car into drive rather than reverse and hop the curb and Ooh. hit the hit the wall in the, children's room, in the, in the children's the, the corner playroom. of the children's room, so, so next to the garden, okay. facing the parking lot, um, and did some damage. I mean, I'm not going to say it's significant, but considering what has to be done to restore it, it's it's significant, even if it's not you know hugely noticeable. <clears throat> and so it's it's hmm. going to be. Um, a little bit disruptive. Uh, we had to, we had a play group this morning. We had to close the room pending um, a test for hazardous, you know, asbestos in the drywall um, because there's an insurance claim and they, they wanted to test that before we could reopen the room. We found out mid morning that it was clear there was no asbestos, so we were able to reopen it. And now we're just waiting for the schedule of. Um, sort of the evaluation of the damage. They're gonna to have to cut a hole in the wall to check the condition of the steel, you know, the st steel, um, the frame, the framing. And make sure that that's okay, but the the, uh, you know, the concrete panel on the outside was kind of pushed in, the wall on the inside, uh, you know, the drywall has got a crack down it under the window. The window itself seems fine. Were um, any shrubs damaged? Yes. In a minor way, they, mm -hmm. it's, you would say more than minor? I would say, yeah, yeah. I would say medium. Okay. Do you think that the shrub is in danger of? No, but it's going dying? to look a little lopsided. Yes. Yeah. Poor shrub. So I, I guess I would say maybe it could have been worse, but um, again, not knowing what actually happened, <coughs> it was just sort of a, a, a Monday morning surprise to to get here and find out that that, that had happened. And, um, so we've been kind of dealing with dealing with the logistics around that. And you said. The person who did the driving hasn't been caught. No one knows exactly when okay. or or, or okay. who or what. Um, there there is a camera, as I understand it, there's a camera over Dunkin' Donuts. There's a camera at the senior center, but there was no value either. There was no footage or like that one down there doesn't record, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's just more there for monitoring when people are in the building, and so there was nothing to review. I don't know what was going on with the Dunkin' Donuts camera, but it just was the wrong angle. Hmm. Or too dark. I don't know, but it um, it did happen. No one was hurt. We have insurance. Hmm. It's just you know, it's just a pain. So we will 
work on getting that fixed. Hopefully, the disruption to the to the room because you know it really is busy. We had to move all of the stuff out of the room. We had a room full of children here for the play group, um, and you know many disappointed caregivers and, and children wanting to get in there and, and use it. So hopefully the disruption is minimal, but I think there probably will be at least a week where we have to close the room and move everything out of it while they kind of tear into it and um, and put it back. So, and then, yeah. Do you know who will do the repair, or that's to be determined? I think it was a company, um, don't put it in the minutes because I don't have it in front of me, but I think it was a company called 24 Restore. Okay. And who selected them? Uh, I guess it was, it was DPW, Gary, and I, I really have no idea. I was not, I wasn't privy to that process. It was just underway. I, I guess I, like, not to throw a wrench in it, but we are stewards of the building, and I feel like we should be part of that. Like, maybe I'm a, I guess having spent all those years kind of, like, being in charge of a building, I, I, I feel like that is a library trustee's, like job, not that I necessarily want to change their mind or like, I, I just feel like it should be noted that it should be a collaborative process, right? Like, as there is a possibility building. that the insurance company might select who does the repairs, because that happens if you need a repair on your car sometimes. It's not like you necessarily get a choice. You are sometimes told where you will take it to have it fixed. Um, I think where Gary is responsible for the care and upkeep of all of the buildings in a more hands-on way than the trustees are, I am not entirely sure that so we need to be informed. I don't know that, and you're welcome to feel differently, that we have that we would direct the process. So maybe my history is wrong. Well, my history isn't wrong, but maybe the MBLC has changed. But when we were in the Goodwin, any time we made any changes to the building, the trustees had to, you know, kind of put in the rec for acquire the person, work it, you know, we did all the selection. And while I like that we actually have people like Gary. I'm not like mm -hmm. trying to put Gary down at all or his involvement down at all. I I guess for me as a steward of a building, I I feel like at least you should be involved. Like even not all of us, even if they just call you and you're like there and it's a little I just think we need to be collaborative because we are in charge of the building. So I, I have been um, doing my best to, to stay in the loop with the repair work. I, I mean, I, I would say in response to, to what you're saying that it is restorative in nature. It's not a change to the building. Um, we're not, as far as I'm aware, going to be handed a bill. This is a, a maintenance task and hopefully the insurance will cover it. Um, I'm grateful that it's moving quickly and you know in terms of operation and, and inconvenience to to patrons staff and everything else I'm just trying I'm trying to minimize that so I, I hear what you're saying but I think you know to the extent that we're wanting to have the DPW where they're responsible for things doing things in a in a responsive and, and expeditious manner I'm glad that that's the way this is working so I, I really, I would hate to jump in and, and start to kind of micromanage because I think that it's already a strained relationship. That's, you know, that's my opinion. From, my, from where I'm sitting, that's, that's kind mm -hmm. of where, where it's at. Is this something that in the future, like, <clears throat> do we need to put up any blocking or something like that, you know? Or block, it, do you, you think this is just an aberrant area? event that somebody drove into the library? Or mm -hmm. is, you know, do we need any I think it, there's a good, it's a good values. indication that it, it can't happen because I think it, I'm mm -hmm. guessing it happened from, a, from a, a standing start. Like they weren't, I don't think they drove in at speed mm -hmm. and like crashed into the building. I think that the car was already pointed at the wall mm -hmm. and it just went forward. So sure, I guess that could happen. What the solution is, I'm not sure. It probably yeah. would be like bollards or something that 
or along the sidewalk, but I don't know that we have space for that. I'm not sure. I'm and not that sure. might be just too much. Mm -hmm. It might not be necessary, but it happened once. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Well, just for comparison, sometime last winter, there was someone who came to the building. I don't know if the car accelerated on its own or if the individual driving it mistakenly did so, but went up the curb, up the berm, bent over two of the oh, arborvitae at the senior center down at the and yeah. ended up a quarter <coughs> of the way across the field and turned around. Wow. So uh, who would have thought that the similar kind of thing would have happened twice in one year in the same parking lot? Hmm. I mean, I think your point is well taken in terms of protecting oneself, but I don't know that as a practical matter that we could do something across the whole face of the library. I don't know if we could do it without having to redesign or widen yeah. the whole sidewalk. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's enough space for something solid there, but um, yeah, I mean, it's a concern. I mean, it's obviously, it's more of a concern to me that like someone, it could have been during open hours and someone could have been like walking down the sidewalk and that could happen. But I, I mean, I don't know that that could happen anywhere in any parking lot at any time. I don't yeah. even know what you can do. So anyway, that that's uh, you know that's happening right now. The other thing that's happening is we have the folks from Gale scheduled to come tomorrow to start the inspection on the roof. Mm -hmm. So they'll be here tomorrow and probably on Thursday, um, weather permitting, and they will get up there. DPW is going to provide the ladder access for them to get up there. Tommy, um, building inspector, and Gary. Building maintenance will be here to guide them and talk about what they have seen up there, hopefully point out all of the problem spots that are of concern to them, and then let them let the Gale folks take it from there. Um, but I am I'm glad that, that is happening. I hope it doesn't get derailed by by wet weather, but it seems like they, they should have a window to, to look. In some ways it's not a bad thing that it might be raining and they could actually it's say that it, it might not be a bad thing that it there's a good chance of rain. And maybe they'll learn something from that. Maybe the, the folks from uh, Rivet, the other the roofing company, has been out here and they have um, done done the work that they see as necessary to stabilize the roof. So hopefully nothing would happen. Yeah. Um, but I think really just in general, we're wanting them to look at the general condition of the roof relative yeah. to the engineering. Is it sufficient? Is it degrading? Um, and then have that to to formulate the next the next step. So. You said Tommy will be here tomorrow. They They're going to meet them, and, yeah, and give them their, give them their, uh, their observations. Um, there's a note on here about s uh, supplemental cleaning. We we're going to try to get Anna to come back and do some additional, um, additional work here at the library. Subsequently, I had a conversation with. Is she Karen. already working? At She's the still. Library she I she doesn't generally. She was the person that that we've been working with. Prior to this year, she was always, not always, but she was with us for a long time at the Goodwin. She worked in a bunch of other town buildings. Okay. Um, and then um, about a year ago, or a year and a half ago, we were saying, you know, it's really busy, we're getting busier. Um, she was only coming three days a week, and we're open six, and it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. So we asked, initially I just said, well, we need, we need basically more custodial. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought the message was clear that, you know, it was fine that, that on it, do it, but it seemed like they were also kind of thinking about it more on a global level about how to do custodial throughout the town. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, fine, I mean, as long as the work is getting done. But it, it kind of like has not really been working. It's not been as thorough as, as it was with, with Anna. Yeah. So who would pay for this? So that was what I was going to, to be talking about. But I am tabling this because in the meantime, I've had a conversation with Carolyn, and Carolyn is saying that she thinks the solution is for for the, the fellow that's assigned to do the work here, be reassigned to another building and Anna come back here to do the work. And I'm trying to get into the details of that. And hopefully that's a budget neutral, uh, budget neutral switch. Um, but I'd like to find out what's going on because just there are some things that are not, that are just not satisfactory. Um, and it's not, we haven't really been able to, to get anywhere with, mm -hmm. um, 
with addressing it. So we just need thorough, more thorough cleaning and, and the things that aren't getting cleaned, somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Um, so that's ongoing. Um, we have hired a new um, circulation assistant for Saturdays and um, Wednesday afternoon and evening. Her name is Annalie uh, Greisel. And uh, so she's here a couple days a week, and that's great because that's freeing Sue up to do other things that are more administrative, um, program planning. Um, she's taken on doing some of the cataloging, uh, cataloging work, um, cataloging requests, things like that that um, that in the past I have generally done, and therefore have tended to languish as like lower priority. So that's that's been great. Um, the web. Uh, the website, I am in touch with CW Mars, and I'm kind of like working on getting a, a set of options together because this is, as I'm digging into it, this is not going to be a sort of one and done solution where we just go to, to CW Mars and use Aspen to set up a complete website. Mm -hmm. We can do that, but I don't know. It may be more user friendly, but I don't know that it's going to have the flexibility or um, I don't think it's going to be an improvement aesthetically on what we're dealing with now. And um, I think we can do I think we can do better with a with a combination approach of like what Aspen has to offer um, a more customized um, navigation for the website, and then using probably a proprietary calendar software that because you, we can just use a Google a Google Calendar thing and you can display that in a few different ways, but generally it kind of looks mm -hmm. doesn't really look yeah. that great. Um, so there are better there are better things that are uh, that are out there for specifically for for libraries. So we're exploring some of that, and we're going to sit down as a staff and, and evaluate a couple of options and have a couple of demos done for those things. So that is that is ongoing, uh, and I'm hoping <coughs> that in the next couple of months I'll be able to put some things in front of you know, to to review with the trustees to just say this is this is what we're thinking, um, and, and get feedback on that. Um, The planting, the native planting uh, project is is a um, is a work in progress. The uh, Owen, the, the landscape designer, was here this week, and we went out and we mark, kind of marked off the contours of where we're looking to modify that. We got into the specific details of what needs to be done as far as like, removing it. It's not as um, we're going to have to remove the top layer of grass, but we, we don't really need to remove much underneath that. He just wants to get down as far as the roots go of the grass and then have some soil that we're going to, to add, soil compost um, that we're going to add to that and then you know, kind of get it all loosened up and then essentially it's ready to go. Will he bring yeah. in those amendments, the soils and all that? Um, I believe we're going to coordinate that, yeah, but I think we, I believe they're paying for it. We may have to, I'm not sure about the logistics of it. Um, so that that is going to be a thing, but essentially because the preparation on this is like is like half the work, um, I'm sort of wondering how we're going to do the kind of preparation beforehand. And so I, I had spoken to you, Joanne. Is that something that is a possibility as far as? I think you know we'd have to figure out what kind of machinery we need, right? Like we can definitely we can talk about it, um, and also. Uh, we may be able to volunteer, except then there, there's, I know that last time with the building, there's like some like issue. I, I, don't, I really don't want to speak out of turn about like, um, like rate wages and ability to volunteer public buildings with like equipment. So I have to like find that out and then I'll, I'll like, let's talk about it. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like you need excavating equipment and not farm equipment because my first question was do you just need like a tractor to mm -hmm. till the earth if so like that can be farm equipment right <laughs> like yeah. where's the line <laughs> like, yeah and i don't i mean i don't really know about this kind of equipment but it seems like really what we just need to do is kind of skim off that that top mm -hmm. Layer. Which sounds like excavating equipment. Right, right. It does. In in the end, sounds like it's our equipment, and and um, I we can find out about volunteering or like how we can do that, and if we can do that. Okay. There was something I feel like in the past when we've 
when I've said, oh, we'll volunteer to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like, so let me check. Okay. Because yep. it doesn't have to do with us. It has to do with, like, procurement. Town like, rules yeah, 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 and all yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just refresh for me the idea. Are there going to be two planting zones? Okay. Yeah, I mean, the one over here is pretty much already there, but the contour will just be expanded. So there's, like, a little bit of a band okay. that goes around that and then comes to the basically to the front corner here. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other one will be from the front corner in a kind of an arc over to the, to, there's a little yeah. sidewalk that comes up and, and I think goes along the side. So it'll just kind of meet the sidewalk, I think. So and thinking back to the volunteer yeah. day that we had when we installed most of the plants years yeah. ago. Yep. What was that, three years ago? Something like that? 2020, I think. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, lost a few years there. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's very true. Know. So it was great. We had lots of people to help. There was some question and confusion about the layout of different plants and mm -hmm. what goes where. I don't know. Will Owen be here that Saturday yeah. to help us? Yeah. Great. And that is June 8th. Is that right? Hmm? Correct. No, right? No, and you know, this ground was stunningly hard. You know, mm -hmm. on the heels of the new construction, yep. everything, it was just so densely packed. I don't think they put the loam back on top. I think that's what happened. That could have been it, or they didn't put much loam, and I know we needed to use picks and other things yep. to loosen up the soil. I yeah. do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those things will not forget, yeah. Is it possible that the DPW has equipment that would be needed? Um. That is a good question. They yeah. might. Yeah, they might. Yeah. Yeah. Because they should have a, a small fleet of differing equipments for different uses around town. A little skid steer or something mm -hmm. that yeah. could clean yeah. off yeah. the I mean, you're, we're grass. not talking acres. I should yeah. actually know more about this than I do. And I mind my business. <laughs> I, I can inquire with them. I, I mm -hmm. don't know what the re reaction will be that, to that, but I will ask. It's worth asking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we're talking about it being a public building and yeah. the mm -hmm. DPW helping with maintenance of For sure. town public buildings, then yes, definitely. It, and I think the timing. I think the timing may be the may be the, mm -hmm. the, the issue though, because we need it sort of ahead of June eighth. So whether mm -hmm. we can fit that in, or whether we need to kind of shift the whole project back, but I know. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know it is what it is, but I know that they're anxious to get the plants because this is the time when the plants are available, and so they're they're wanting to kind of, you know. When do you want it done? Um, before June. Before, before, before June. June 8th, like whatever okay. is a convenient time okay. for that to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and how about gathering up volunteers, or is that being done by the friends of the library, or how is that happening? Um, so we've made a couple of announcements about that, and so we have kind of a core group. I'm, I'm hoping that we will get um, at least 10 people for that. So I think at this point we've got um, six to seven people committed. June 8th and what time? Uh, I think we're going to start assembling as early as, well, some of, I think some of us will be here early, but I think we're announcing it as like 9 or, nine or 9.30 to start. Okay. Um, but I, I think some of us will be here to, to get the work done of like picking up the plants if that has to be done that morning and, mm -hmm. and so, sort of the, the uh, okay. earlier logistical things. So, but I think 9.30 and, and will be when we actually start kind of like getting to work. Where would we find these lists, like if people are interested in signing up? Uh, you can just, you can do it at the circulation desk. You can contact me. You can, you know, it's a, we have a clipboard up there that, that people can give us a name, send an email. Whatever. Thanks. And related to that, um, the Hamden Hampshire Conservation District is hoping to stage their um, plant sale pickup here, like they did last fall. Uh, on Saturday, September 7th from 9 to 12. Um, and they, I think as, um, as we did last year, um, they're hoping to potentially have the use of the back parking lot, like the, the part that's like right adjacent mm -hmm. to the. Mm -hmm. Will there be information, excuse my ignorance, about ordering plants yeah. at the library? For this sale? Mm -hmm. I can ask about that. I don't know how they're, I'm not really sure how they're, how this 
the plant sale itself works. It wasn't last time. It wasn't something that was promoted through the library. It was like something yeah. that they did out in the world, mm -hmm. and we're looking for a site, a public site, to do this. So I can, we can definitely ask. For it just that might be nice because yeah, I yeah. like don't know anything about. Like I wonder how many yeah, people have they don't know anything about it. Yeah, yeah. Some so, and. Yeah. And having the demo garden and then yep. having the plant sale right. pick up here, it's a nice kind of connecting the dots mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. encourage yes. us to. When Owen did his guest lecturing, mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. many of us actually signed up for um, who's the other person? It was Megan mm -hmm. um, to get meadows and our yards and things like that. And so I know that she put it out there that she yeah. was you know willing to help and they were promoting owen's book you can rip my entire lawn out if <laughs> yeah we have a great meadow spot for it <laughs> yeah you do we had wildflowers there for a long time did megan give you a list of the people who attended owen's lectures because that had been spoken of as a potential mm. source of volunteers she didn't give me the list but she had offered to help to to drum some people up through through their, their lists, so I'm going to take them up on that for them to publicize okay. it and um, help to, to maybe get a few people from their end to do this, because it is, I think, kind of the way it's being pitched, um, if, I don't know if you picked up on that, but the way I interpreted it was that this partia partially, the planting, the volunteer planting with him there as the expert on the subject is partially instructional. It's mm -hmm. not just coming to big holes, <laughs> it's kind of like learning yeah. about the, yeah. you know, the process and, and what the plants need. Um, so there may be interest beyond just mm -hmm. library sure. patrons. Uh, what are they called yeah. again? The Hampshire Franklin? No. The Hampshire, Hampshire Conservation Hampton Commission? Hampshire Conservation District. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, before this night is done, I'll, yeah. I'll happily put my name down. Oh, sure. That's that. great. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Um, yeah, so I, I guess do, do we need to, do, do the trustees need to vote on approval of use of this space as a, as a pickup zone oh, again? I think, I think last year there was a vote, but I... Probably. I don't have no objections whatsoever to having that in place. So is there a... I move that the Hampton Hampshire Conservation District be allowed to use the area at the back of this library on September 7th for their plant sale pickup. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. What was our first vote tonight? Was it just a minutes? Minutes. Approval? Okay. We approved of them. Okay. Yep. Got, it. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Just making sure. I'm, I'm helpful. I don't have a separate page for the votes <laughs> yet. <laughs> Patrick, can I ask one question about yes. the budget that I actually looked at today? Yes. Um, the office supply budget is like $665 in the hole, and I am wondering if maybe that has something to do with the library carts that some of us were really, really anxious to have, and if those... No, they're just the, the library supply budget was, was just so small, and the, uh, the bottom line, all the, the, as I understand it, Customarily, what um, what they are concerned with is the bottom line for, for the for services, for supplies. Mm -hmm. services okay. and supplies and bottom line for uh, for personnel expenditures. So if, if one okay. is over, bottom line is under, fine. They just want to make sure that, that that's what happens. So um, at the end of the of the year, I actually will probably, although, yeah, I, it doesn't really matter. But we we now have new accounting services. The town has just contracted with a new accounting service, so oh, really? everything's a little bit upended, um, and so we have new folks to deal with. But um, what I would do in a in a in a normal year at this time would be to probably um, potentially, as we're seeing how much money is left, re potentially reclassify some of the expenses. Okay. So, for instance, we because um, we're underspent on on the personnel budget, um, some of the money that was approved by the trustees to be paid from LigMeg to pay for the, the five hours to get Sue up to full time, that could be reclassified and go back and be paid from the regular budget and then put the LigMeg money back in the LigMeg pot. Okay. Um, so things like that could be, um, will be addressed before the end of the year. I That's just fine. haven't done it with these new folks who will have to figure out what the processes, but. I actually looked at it and said, oh, okay. 
I think the cart's, uh, I'm trying to remember if the cart was, um, was that the thing that? that well, there's happened. the purple one, the orange one, and the red one. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that, that was the conversation. I think that was the, what prompted the conversation with Linda where she was saying, you know, you're paying for this out of constru remaining construction funds. And I said, well, we have been paying for, you know, things to outfit the library out of that remaining money. But if you want me to pay for it out of another pot of money, I will do that. And that's what we did. Okay. And I think that's, I think that is, I think that's it. Isn't that enough? Um, library, actually, I will mention the library of things. We're doing, uh, we're doing a soft launch of that later this month. We've got um, about a dozen items that are ready to circulate. We're just putting the kind of, putting the final touches on the process of how that's going to work. It's probably going to be residents only at this point for, mm -hmm. for some of these items because um, some yeah. of the kind of horror stories of things being taken out of the community and then it's just like, you're never, you know, you're never gonna get it back. Mm -hmm. It seems not unreasonable with such a small collection like this of items, some of which are, um, even though we're not paying a lot of money for them, like we have like a guitar that was donated to the library that mm -hmm. could go out as part of this library of things, but it's yeah. probably worth a couple hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. so it seems, it seems fair to limit that, at least for the time being. And what? Do you want the items listed in the no. minutes at all? No. Okay. Not yet, but okay. we'll, we'll um, it, it's going to be announced publicly and. Um, so and like these are physical objects? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're, yeah, all, all right. kinds of just useful, useful things. I know. I, I wonder why. I know. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be pleasantly yeah. surprised. Yeah. 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 What? Just what do we have to wait <laughs> like everyone else? You know, it's, it's, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I don't want to like undersell it, but it's not that exciting. We can it's have like, like a uh, fundraiser where yeah. people guess what the items are oh, and you pay, yeah. you know, the one who guesses, you, you pay in and then the person You get to check it out first. Yeah, yeah. I'm well, yeah. just wondering if it's a chainsaw. <laughs> No. You need one, Jack? <laughs> no, but everybody can use one. It actually works. Yeah. Sue, Sue Golotsky, <laughs> and, and who deals with the insurance, will not allow that. That's, yeah. that's, that's true. Yeah. So no knives. No knives. <laughs> no pokey things. No. It's, it's all pretty straightforward. Well, in Leverett, they work with the community, and they actually have kayaks that they, yeah. Yeah. they lease yeah. for a week. Yeah, yep. you know. Right, so I think really once the once we, we kind of like get the process the down, and we're seeing that this is working. We, you know, the 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 opportunities are fairly unlimited, just mm -hmm. as long as nobody can be poked, stabbed, or <laughs> bludgeoned. You know, yeah. Yeah. there's space for it. Lose a limb. Yeah, and yes, and space is another concern. Um, a horse. And that's pretty much it. And I think the lead <laughs> stuff is probably in the building uh, as as part of the building stuff. So I'll, I'll refrain from talking about that, and we'll move on. Um, Susan and I met yesterday to talk about director review because the light bulb went off about two weeks ago and was like, oh, we need to do this. And Jess is going to be going off the board and it would be incredibly important to have her knowledgeable and informed contribution. She has generously agreed to complete the process and whether or not she chooses to participate in the conversation is entirely up to her. But in consultation with Susan and Patrick, um, the process that we have sort of kind of set up is that we will use the same online information collection for staff members and I will be in touch with them about that. And I have asked Patrick to please report, give a brief report so we all know exactly where things stand with respect to the specific goals that were set for this year. Great. And once I have the staff summary and Patrick's um, report on goals, then all of us will complete, and I think I'm just going to put it online rather than on paper, um, a streamline formed such as was used the last time Jess and Maureen mm -hmm. were in charge that addresses elements of the job description and then will 
assess the degree to which the goals were met and there will also be an element in it to ask because when you're in the midst of this process it can sometimes spur people to think about what should goals for the coming year be mm -hmm. and it would be good to have those like before December January <laughs> so um, I just wanted to let you know that I have been thinking about this and that I think a, pro a procedure has been outlined and you will hear more on the subject but that's the plan Ms. Joanne do you have anything to say about strategic planning I do and oh, I good. I had talked to you but I want to share with the rest of the board um, so uh, Allison and I talked we came up with a questionnaire as as everyone directed about programming specifically and then Patrick and I met and the more we talked and reviewed our last strategic plan and thought programming is a part of this but there's more to it to a, to a full comprehensive strategic plan than just programming not to say that that isn't a great you know piece and of it but we want to expand upon it and and because those comments we got from the group were really broken down nicely into those kind of different categories I think we want to think more broadly about the categories. so the first step was that Patrick is doing a SOAR with the staff um, t tomorrow right yep. um, and then Patrick and I are going to meet again and think about okay now what do we do we we need multiple ways to kind of gather information um, and then we're going to talk more specifically about what those methods are and move forward with planning I think that you know I apologize to Patrick I felt like I kind of jumped with programming and then really didn't think and remember all the other pieces that we put together last time. So I, I think we'll come up with a better plan this way and we are continuing to move forward with it. I think that was the predominant theme. I mean, it, it, it's a big part of like what people talked about and that was, it was kind of the major theme, but the, as I was sitting there thinking about, you know, reviewing the, the, the questionnaire that was going to be put out, and just then thinking, well, okay, here's the long range plan that I'm trying to update or, or replace. And I'm like, this is only covering one piece of it. Mm -hmm. and, and the other part of it is that I, I felt, and this is why I think it's important that, that the staff are participating in this is because the staff are seeing a completely different, you know, they're seeing yeah. a more 360 mm -hmm. kind of sense of all the services and, mm -hmm. and what they're seeing as the strengths and the opportunities and, um, and where their concerns lie and where they think we can we can do better or where we can do things that we we haven't done yet or, or things that people are asking for because they really know when are you going to do this when are you going to do that mm -hmm. um, so I want to I want to get them into the mix as well Sue was at the last one I was at the last one with you know with the general public um, but I think we just need to kind of listen to each other as, as staff and, and, and find out and I have a question for you uh, Lynn given that you brought up the review process when would the next goals be needed I'm trying to think of a timeline of the review because you know if we have the if we have the strategic plan it makes it easier for Patrick and us to come together on what the goals are but I don't I'm trying to see if that can line up or not well I think in fairness to Patrick it would be desirable to establish the goals I'd like to have it by July or August. Okay, so we probably won't be ready with the strategic plan by then. But, I mean, in the same way, when we set the goals for the current year, there was some recognition of, the director doesn't have complete control of this, so it doesn't mean that it's not an important thing that shouldn't be mentioned. But even even if you craft something relative, 
something relative to the strategic plan. And maybe it's just that we complete a strategic plan becomes a goal, be. right? Like that might yes. actually become the goal rather than things rather than out something of the more strategic plan. Yes. Right, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was just trying to sure. line everything up. And yeah. um, I, I think it's, um, if anyone wants to read it, I was here and it worked on the last strategic plan. Patrick has it um, out and ref, you know easy for us to reference when we meet. Um, and if anyone wants to read it, it's it's available, and I'm sure he would love to. Can it that plan inform the next plan? The outline of it, perhaps, but not so much okay. the content, right. it because was, it was in a different time. I would say, I would say the, 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 the guiding principles of that plan were that we need an updated facility. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like, I mean, when you read the plan, you'll yeah. be like, oh, wow, we actually did check, it, check, check. It makes we'll you feel good when yeah, you read the plan. Really if you ever want to feel good, go back and read yeah. the plan. I was like, oh, I did something right. It's actually right. kind of amazing <laughs> how, how much of that stuff actually got done. And it wasn't like we just sat around and looked at the long range plan and said, like, what's next? It just, we were very on point and it was a very um, well-crafted document. And the document also goes into the methodology of how um, how the process went, what the steps were. Um, so it actually was good to, to go back and review it. Um, but I would say that yes, because most of those goals have been, they're going to be different goals this time. I mean, they're going to be different, different goals and object objectives for the library. And it is probably going to be by and large about the, li you know, about the programming, the program of the library. Um, this yeah. is definitely version 2.0. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do one of these every five years, so it's actually probably how many have mm -hmm. we submitted? I don't know, but um, but it's it's a it's every it's supposed to be every five years or so. Submitted to MBLC. Yeah. To the MBLC. Yeah. And once it's on record with MBLC, then we're you know eligible for if a grant comes our way. Before it was the building grant, right? Yeah. The feasibility yeah. study and all of that, but. You, you never know right. what's going to come up. And is this for the Lig Meg funding or no? It's not tied to Lig Meg no. funding. Just, nope. Right. But it, it is, it just puts us, if they ever put out any different grants and they say, yep. you yep. know, must have a long range plan, I thought it's also good because it really helps the trustees, the director, like everyone. Like when I think back to it, it really kind of put us in one place thinking about. And, yeah. and we got there, so we got to think where we're going. But, yeah, and part of the conversation, part of the conversation that made this kind of all start to make sense that we had in this direction in updating this, which it was overdue to be done anyway, but was that again having that set of goals there. It was very consistent with for me personally, coming to work every day, knowing that this that there was this kind of underlying set of you know directional principles mm -hmm. go in that direction and get these things done and that's by and large how I filled my time and in the absence of that then it's kind of like well what do you want me to do what should I be doing when I come to work yeah, and yeah. I, I would say also that the um, that as far as the goals for this year we have please recall though that those goals were like put forward in November for this year so right. and, and now we're coming up right. on this. so right. the, by you know you, they're going to be it's going to be a list of things that are kind of like on their way yeah. and we're making progress. But I do hope that going forward that we get into a thing that by July 1st when we go into the next year that a new set of goals is, is put in place and then we're like, okay, here we go. We're starting a year fresh mm -hmm. and you know this is clearly established and there's like a, a year to get the things done. So and yeah. if the plan is done right, it will be easy for us to select from the plan. Well, I, I mean, again, I mean, I have a three-year contract. The plan is a five-year plan. So I mean, like the, the last the last, you know, the next couple of years would be, there's enough time for that to still inform what I'm, what I'm doing yeah. um, without it being done by July 1. Yeah. But yes. Well, the other thing, just in terms of timing, is that I am asking you in May to comment on items that <coughs> technically have another five, six weeks to be completed. Sure. And I mean, it's certainly my expectation that even if you are unable to say that this is all done, this is how much progress has been made, this is what I expect before the end of the year. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. if there are, if there is other information that informs that, mm -hmm. that that should be included. That's yeah. Absolutely. 
Jack, do you want to talk about lead stuff? Or do you want to wait until next month? Let's wait until next month. Okay. Um, I do want to mention that Phil suggested, well, I'll talk about it a little bit. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Phil suggested that there's, it's our right to move forward. You don't necessarily have to wait until this building has solar panels, for example. That would be one option. That would actually maybe raise us, not necessarily to platinum, but to silver. I don't know exactly the way they structure it. But that it's worth it for us to get moving on it. Hmm. That's why I wait. We're laughing about the lights. And as the lights go out, do we <laughs> have anything? <laughs> is there any other business that anybody else wants to mention or talk about or whatever? So what happens after the next election um, when it comes to the number of trustees and all of that? People who have historical knowledge of how this should be. Theoretically? Should there be seven? No, six. Six. The okay. MBLC guidelines say that you have to have a multiple of three. That has always struck me as insane, right. Right. Yeah. but that's what it is. Well, it can be like 1.5 times. <laughs> no, seriously. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. What it should be is three or it. any odd number above that. If okay. you want 13, oh, have at it. Last person in doesn't get a vote. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am not aware of any prospective write-in candidates, but that's. I've had a I've had a number of conversations with folks, you know, at the desk, just you know, people that are longtime library patrons, and said, hey, you know, just like gently, have you ever thought about, you know, yeah. being or how about the conversation like, if a bunch of people wrote you in, would you do yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's lately, that's, you know, since that, that's where we are, that's kind of where the conversation is. But um, unfortunately, I mean, we've got, we've got, I've got a lot of positive feedback and I got a lot of people that said, you know, I would love to do that, but I cannot do it this year because life, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think, I think there's a, a pool of people out there that, that will end up doing it in the future, but it's just, it's so right now. Yeah. Seeing the ballot, there were probably four <coughs> things that had no candidates, something like that. Hmm. I've just yeah. mailed mine there's in. One. Um, um, Oliver Smith will. Um, yeah, Maureen didn't submit her stuff, but I know she's doing a writing campaign. Okay. Um, also, your neighbor across the street asked if I would vote for her yeah. if she ran. Um, but there were a few other housing, positions. Housing, yeah. whatever I think. Yeah. Does not have a candidate. Hmm. Anything else? Well, then there's one last thing. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Did you grow those? Hmm? Did you grow those? No. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Atkins and I bought my I half a dozen more. donuts. Oh. <laughs> and I got those too. <laughs> Thank you. You're I'm welcome. on my bike, but I think that they will survive <laughs> in the basket. <laughs> Hold them in your teeth, you know. Yeah, how, str <laughs> how strong is the string? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I will, I will be happy to drive them to your <laughs> house, and they could be there when you get there, if that would be. I think I can, I think I can. Just don't let them. Well, pour some of the water out. Yeah, yeah. So they don't get the iPad wet. I carried Stranger Things in my my bike before. <laughs> okay. I don't I don't want that. <laughs> when I was in grad school I lived for a while for a long time without a car, so the number of things I would like balance, you know, on the bike was So you've served three years? Yes. What is what's like some of the biggest takeaways from from serving those three years. Oh. The blooper reel. <laughs> no, not looking for bloopers, just looking for facts. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think I think one is that there is quite a learning curve at the beginning, like as you're getting all of the acronyms down and and the 
the sort of institutional history. Um, so th that took me a little while to get the hang of. Um, wave your arms around when the lights go out. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we can? <laughs> Nick was trying <laughs> that. It is my hope that I can instead be a volunteer her at the library. Great. Because I think that that would be something I have more capacity for. You can it's always fun. use that. Oh, I, it, it is fun. I, I filled in, um, I don't know, a year or two ago. Um, I don't remember what the occasion was, but trustees were kind of asked to come in. I was like, I need to do this more often, but I didn't know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, just be in touch. Okay. Put you to work. Do you organize that, or does Sue? Talk, Sue is kind of the, she is the kind of the, the one that has the finger on the schedule, like who's like where we have need and what, you know, okay. where it's, we're already kind of dealing with, you know, maybe too many people on a, on a single day. But yeah. yeah, talk to Sue about that, for sure. Mm -hmm. You can also just come in and look <coughs> around and say, oh, I am inventing a job for myself. I will do this. <laughs> Lynn's saying that from experience. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow or other, I became the label queen. Oh. I am not entirely sure how I got that, but I did. It's fine. I just want to show folks. You need a little pin that says LQ. <laughs> I'll get a t-shirt <laughs> that says, you know, usually I come over after exercise and it's just a regular t-shirt. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. We are adjourned, assuming that all of you vote yes. Yay.